Okay, hello everyone, and thank you very much for joining the one on one stream today. Today's topic is how to start or improve mainframe DevOps using open source on set. And we have Ilya and Valinson from IBA group on today. Um, so if you have any questions throughout the session, please just post them in the chat box and um, I think Ilya and Valinson can go through those towards the end of the session. And I also just wanted to let you know that at 11 a.m. we are observing a two minutes silence for Remembrance Day. With that, Ilya, I hand over to you. Uh, thanks, Lena. Uh, so I hope you could hear me well. Yeah, I see. And uh, so, uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Ilya. I'm from IBA Group and uh, I work in as a DevOps engineer, and I'm mainly engaged in the creation of uh, automated Jenkins pipelines uh, and uh, creating integration uh, of different tools and services uh, with each other. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce uh, our uh, the main base of our uh, today's topic. Uh, it's like global repository for mainframe developers. So uh, our company and our team develop tons of content in the mainframe DevOps area. But today we are going to talk about something new. Uh, when we work with new technologies, we have to search for something every day, search for information about something, search for examples and templates and blanks. Uh, search for something that will quickly help us and solve our daily tech problems. Uh, in the mainframe world for a long time, the search for information was limited due to the closeness of the systems themselves uh, and the lack of a community on the network that would uh, actively share knowledge. So uh, that's why we came up with the idea of the global repository for mainframe developers and decided to share with you. Uh, so GRMD is an acronym, as we usually call it. Uh, uh, it helps to solve the mainframe issues. And uh, as we say on ourselves, uh, we are trying to make the mainframe always at hand. So let's deeply look at what we are talking about. Uh, so with this project, you can save a lot of time, effort, and frustration when solving mainframe problems through out, throughout some of your technical folders, notebooks, files, and sticky notes. Uh, discover a lot of useful and to, uh, hard to find mainframe information in one place. Learn some new modern approaches to mainframe administration. Uh, like bring real world DevOps practices to your mainframe function. Uh, contribute your knowledge to the mainframe community. So core problems in mainframe administration has been a very close, siloed discipline. Uh, the downstream problems you are, of course, know. Uh, every company and professional dug in their own direction. So people were forbidden or afraid to publish anything they learned. And we have lacked uh, a community that shared common problems and solutions. Uh, so, and to find solution to the mainframe problems, professionals uh, have to create their own stack of folders, files, notebooks, and sticky notes, turn to colleagues for help, uh, and hope someone knows the answer, search through tons of boring documentation to solve the problem, go through decades of forum posts to see if it's been discussed before, or build it patchwork solution from random pieces of information. So as a result, you waste a lot of time and only find fragmented answers. Uh, so we have created an open source repository for all things mainframe. So QR codes uh, here on the slide, uh, the bottom of the slide, uh, uh, provide for the future reference. We'll guide you to the our GRMD repository, which I also show the next few minutes. Uh, so, and by using our repository, for example, you will fill the gaps in your current sources of mainframe knowledge, gain access to a single hub for 
tested proven mainframe solutions, uh, spend less time searching for solutions and more time implementing them. So to start, uh, we were just solving our own problems. So like, for example, uh, my desk, my desktop was covered with uh, thousands of sticky notes with comments and scripts uh, on them. It's truth. Uh, my colleagues were doing the same thing and just as frustrated with it. So we had developed a lot of great information, but it was uh, all very silent. So we decided to pull all of our information into shared repository. Uh, so we want to create a hub where anyone could read, for example, ask questions, comment on information, communicate with each other, edit and improve on existing resources, and their own information to the, and add their own information to the repository. Uh, so here I will show what this look like. Um, so here Google Chrome. So it's uh, our own, like, uh, for example, uh, demo website. So I think we should start on our JRMD project, like uh, landing page on which we briefly try to convey the key idea of our project, uh, how it can be useful and what task it solves. So right there, you can watch uh, our short v video available on YouTube, the same goes, like, subscribe, press the bell. <laughs> uh, so we also thought about how to express our gratitude to those who actively participate in contributing to the repository. Uh, so, and decided to add the top of most active contributors. So, and it would be great to see you on this list. Uh, and also here we decided to add uh, uh, a part of our, like, for example, blog story with articles in which we share our ideas, thoughts, and experience in the mainframe development. So, well, let's move on the repository itself. Buttons from the website, uh, like, try to uh, move us to the repository itself. So here on the Wiki page, we could find all our repositories. So basically we are showing the contents of the boards of the repository through the GitHub Wiki pages, but everything is the same in the classic form for the GitHub repository. You could find on the code tab here, as you can see. So you could easily just clone it by git clone command uh, with your, for example, uh, git desktop version and uh, open all files. Uh, all files are placed in M, uh, .md file format. So you could easily open them by any PDF editor or other stuff. So, or you can just download the archive with all files, comments, scripts, and so on. So, uh, as I mentioned, we shown contents of the repository by the wiki pages due to some uh, some sort of best user experience. Like here on the wiki pages, uh, as you can see on the right side, we have a navigation bar where uh, which will shown on each page. Uh, which we want to show, for example, like this, and we still uh, could navigate from any page we want. And for example, here at the bottom of this page, uh, we have repository content with uh, all URL links, uh, which will provide us access to this in information. So uh, it's typically use case for the repository, we suggest bookmark the repository homepage and subscribe to updates. Also, you could clone or download the repository or fork it. For example, like here, click on this fork button. You will have uh, just uh, uh, this, all of the sources, but uh, at your own repository where you could do, uh, just for example, make uh, any uh, just 
edit or add your personal private information for it. Uh, so, and uh, also to improve the repository, we need any help to make it useful for everyone by adding public examples, work tips and tricks, scripts, templates. So any help is appreciated. Uh, and GitHub repository is safe and convenient place. Your files will not disappear anywhere and the history of commits will help you in case of any files changes or deletions. So therefore we believe that you can, for example, fork our repository, make it private and use it as your own local private repository for storing your private materials, just for example. So on the homepage, we have a list of topics and their contents, uh, as I mentioned before. Here, just for example, our DevOps scripts, uh, mainframe automation solution and best practices, uh, SMP automation scripts, uh, Rakt commands, SPF commands, budget sale jobs, examples, scripts, templates, useful tricks, whatever you want. <laughs> uh and uh, all like uh, open source you could uh, just grab them and use them so the repository is under development some structures and design may change slightly because we try to listen to other people's feedback and improve user experience uh if you have an idea how you can improve something add something new or you notice an error or typing a typo, so we are all human, you know. <laughs> uh, you can easily open a GitHub issue, create a pull request, or create a GitHub discussion on a topic of interest. So we will be happy to answer or help with the question. So let's begin, and our use case we would like to show you today and what we are going to talk about. Uh, so let's get back to the our presentation. So here. Uh, let's just imagine that you are just a junior at mainframe area. Manager just came to you one day and said, please create me DevOps from scratch on the mainframe. Uh, but you had no idea, honestly, on what to do, <laughs> what DevOps actually is, and you're really, really junior in the mainframe area. And you are just like in crazy situation, what to do? And by this presentation and by everything we prepared for you in advance, we just try to help on all of the stuff. So on the slide, we have prepared a simplified high-level architecture diagram uh, to make it easier and clearer what will be discussed and how everything works together. Uh, we also try to divide everything into parts of the DevOps processes just for example from uh, as well known devops uh, infinite ring like plan stage uh, code build deploy operate test uh, and we in our next demo showcase which will present us uh, Valentin, by valentin uh, we will uh, show you how it looks like in real life uh, on our uh, in our local project so uh, just for example, here, all of this stuff, as you can see on the presentation, uh, like we try to cover each DevOps process uh, by different uh, set of tools. Just for example, plan and monitor process, DevOps processes we try to cover by Jira, uh, all which uh, all which correlates with tests and quality gate, we try to cover by open source uh, test man, uh, open source test management system like TestLink. Also, we try to integrate a free trial version of SonarCube, which you also could try by yourself for uh, for some time. Uh, and also other steps like code build, deploy, operate, uh, as you can see here mentioned on the mainframe side, with help of uh, ZOS Git and Ziggy Git ISPF interface, which will present balancing in the next demo. So, and also I want to share, for example, here on the our repository itself, 
he, here in the section of mainframe automated solution and best practices, you could find a mainframe DevOps tutorial, how we bring DevOps uh, and automation to the mainframe. So in this topic, uh, we covered all this as architecture, as I mentioned before, like uh, all stages, code, build deployment, build deployment release, test, deploy, operate, plan and monitor. Uh, so, and just for example, here, click on plan and monitor. Uh, you could easily find all necessary information about Jira integration with Jenkins, how it looks like, how it could be done, and uh, all useful links, tips, tricks, scripts. So all could be found here. So just for example, how to add comments to Jira ticket, you just click on it and uh, open the page with uh, information uh, how we use it. And so the script itself at comment to Jira such. So here we have a script which uh, by with help of CURL will uh, add comments to Jira ticket, which also would be shown in the our next uh, demo demo video. Uh, and just for example, here we also mentioned about uh, Jira integration, like uh, using Jira plugin, Jira pipeline steps, uh, Jira test results report plugin, all placed here all necessary links. So, and here we placed our like uh, uh, advices, how to integrate uh, which issues you probably will face during this way of integration. So all placed here in our articles. So back to table and here all other stuff from the this uh, schema of simple mainframe open source DevOps. So I think uh, that's all I want to share with you about uh, mainframe architecture. So the next step we will uh, present you our demo showcase, which we'll share Valencian just for now. So I think Valencian, could you please uh, share your screen? <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Valentin, also from IBA Group. Um, I'm a DevOps engineer, and also I do kind of CEO's administrative work. So for now, I want to share our demo video because of some possible connection issues or something else. We decided to pre-record our demo part so we are absolutely sure what's going on but even so there will be a little bug a little issue that we faced with and we recovered it right during the recording and decided to leave it here just to show that anything can happen so in the demo video we will show you how each stage of devops looks like how it works how it flows how different tools interact with each other and so on and of course after this and during this, you can ask uh, any questions in the chat. So welcome, I am starting this video. All right, so I want, I want to tell to you about a code stage of DevOps lifecycle, first of all. And the main DevOps feature for code stage is ability to have code version control system. The most popular is Git, of course. Uh, it is free and open source. Also, Ziggy uh, is a freeware ISPF frontend tool to Zeo's Git client. It's uh, written in Rex, uh, provides user-friendly ISPF interface, and transparent usage of native Zeo's file system for handling a uh, local repository. So here you can see the screen uh, uh, already installed, prepared, configured, and connected uh, Ziggy, as you can see, to remote uh, repository. Uh, about you can find information about installation, configuration, etc. Also in our article about DevOps, as was mentioned before, here about Ziggy. You can find all information. 
So let's uh, look uh, on an example. So let's imagine you have uh, a new issue in your Jira board. Uh, you got a new task. Uh, you should do some some developing new features, etc. Requirements number one, number two, number three. So then you will go to your source code of your application here, just a sample application, and want to change it. Ziggy provides uh, any managing uh, of your data sets in your local repository. So for example, we, we go to PLI slash edit. Okay, there are two data sets. Edit, I'm oh, sorry, them as well. Maybe here you will add some functionality. Okay, you now you can see status is modified. Going back to our branch. First of all, you should and this change the data set to the git index here add option it will take a few seconds making it ready to commit All right <laughs> okay Okay, now it's ready to commit. Then we will go to local repo menu and commit changes. So there is uh, one special rule for commit element is you should put your issue number from Jira uh, in commit title, first of all. So in this example, it's uh, DVASS291. So we will put here uh, DVS S291 and then uh, some title name, title name as you wish. Also, you can add some description if you want. Uh, as you pre press F3, it will make commit. All right, so commit was since started. So now we will go to our Jenkins pipeline. And as commit is started, it should trigger our pipeline. This way. Okay, now we can see something has started. Okay, our pipeline has started. I want to say a few words about uh, particularly this pipeline. We prepared for you a special article about this pipeline in our repository Jenkins mainframe pipeline code example. Uh, there you can find a uh, description about how its pipeline works, um, what about all stages, check code, build, docker build, unit tests, etc. And also we provide to you the source code of this pipeline so you can copy it, try, uh, try on your project. Uh, of course, it is just a start version of, for you. So when you get experience, get more experience in this um, sphere, uh, you will know how, to, how it works. You can, uh, of course, change, your, especially for your, uh, for your project. So now the build stage is almost done. So using, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, fell with some one GCL builder part is all, but it's okay. Uh, let me to to describe you previous stages. Uh, okay. I want to talk to about build stages. All right, so the, the main DevOps feature for build stage is ability to transfer some data sets to mainframe. 
and also remote execution of so, GCL files. Uh, in this uh, particular example, one uh, GCL execution has failed, but maybe we will uh, show you example on successful one. So here you can see at the build stage, I'm opening the logs of this stage. You can see we use shell script uh, to transfer data set to our mainframe and also uh, shell script for running GCL jobs. This uh, uh, this uh, shell script you can also find in our repository. So here there's shell script for data set transferring from Unix to the mainframe via FTP, for example. It's open, you can try on your machines and also shell script for running GCL jobs on the mainframe via FTP. So here is example. Uh, it's very use, easy to use and it all it is all open source. So uh, that's what I wanted to tell about your code and build stages and now Ilya will tell you about the next stages. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, Valentin. And uh, sorry, could you please uh, restart with a new commit to uh, yep. our pipeline? During I will talk a little bit about testing and yep, uh, other course. stages. Uh, okay, thank you. So I'm start screen sharing. I hope you could see my screen now. Uh, so uh, talking about uh, testing. Uh, so in our case. Here we go in uh, the test uh, test stage in our article. So in our case, we decided to use only open source tools that uh, are available for everyone, have open source code and uh, ability to customize with uh, extensive REST API. So for our goals, uh, perfectly fits uh, the testing and also test trail with its own uh, free trial for, as I remember, for a few weeks. Uh, so for our case, we decided to choose uh, a testing. So uh, as a result, we have a ready test management system where uh, testers in your team write test cases, uh, test plans, uh, automated tests, uh, the description, preconditions, and so on uh, in one place. So. Uh, I think it's the better way the, uh, than just try test you know, like in Microsoft Excel in tables and so on. So uh, for our purposes for starting, it's, I think it's a uh, uh, great feature. So from our article, you could easily find all necessary links to testing sources, test link uh, Jenkins plugin, uh, and how to easily connect your test link with your Jenkins pipeline and connect your test cases with um, uh, related automated tests, uh, which are also stored in our Git repository here. Valentin, can you stop yes, the video? Yes, of course. Because we will now yeah. at 11 observe the two minute silence for Remembrance Day. Okay, we will continue after. Sure. Yeah, thank you. For that. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. Quentin, um, feel free to share your screen again. Okay, thank you. Let's continue from the test stage. Just... All right. Uh, so, uh, just from our article, is, okay. is, is, is we find all necessary links to testing sources, test link uh, Jenkins plugin, uh, and how to easily connect your test link with your Jenkins pipeline and connect your test cases with um, uh, related automated tests, uh, which are also stored in our Git repository here. It's simple uh, Java tests, which uh, should be run during our pipeline execution. Uh, so, and here, as you can see, we pre-installed uh, our test link uh, on Ubuntu server. Uh, for such purposes, we also have a separate Jenkins job, such a testing unit tests, uh, which handle all our uh, automated uh, zeroes tests. So here you could also see uh, test results trend, uh, some graphs, uh, how much uh, passed tests and fail. So, and also in testing for previous test execution, you can easily find like uh, like this, uh, which test and where uh, was run and which are passed or not. So, and also here in uh, test specification, you can find your necessary test suite with all test cases. Uh, and uh, also here, for example, you can find uh, all execution history it looks like this. Uh, so from here, you can find all your previous test runs with related uh, test results. Just for example, uh, this one uh, test, uh, test result XML, where testers could find all the necessary information, which tests are passed, uh, on which environment they were run, and uh, all the required information about system, uh, software versions, and so on and so on. Uh, so, and um, talking about uh, uh, a little bit about Sonar Cube and the quality gate. Um, uh, unfortunately, for this demo, we cannot show its uh, integration and its real launch due to the expired our trail version. But we decided uh, not to remove it from our article. So here we have described the options for install it with uh, all necessary uh, useful links. So you could easily uh, try it uh, by yourself, uh, start a free trial version and install it in, uh, in your Ubuntu server or other environment and connect it with your Jenkins uh, via uh, Sonar Cube uh, pre-installed plugin and of course pre-configured. Uh, so, and get back to our article. Uh, for the next stage, uh, I will talk a little bit about release and uh, operate stage. So for these purposes, we also use some shell scripts. Uh, the one, uh, the most uh, useful for us, so uh, one of them is like, uh, Shell script for transferring chain sources and Git to the mainframe via FTP. So it's easily to find here with all source code and uh, all, all description. And of course, as an alternative for, for this functionality, you can use uh, IBM ZS Connect plugin. Uh, here also, we share some thoughts and uh, our experience how we installed it uh, in our environment how we configure it and uh, of course uh, we easily use it from and try it from our article and uh, use it as alternatives for, for our previous shell scripts. Uh, but in our case, we use shell scripts during that they are more suitable and uh, um, like uh, you could use it in uh, many places and uh, and run them on any environment. So it's cross-platform. And um, also here for, for our article and uh, for 
And they want to show also with a monitor stage. Uh, here, as you can see, we put some, uh, uh, some information about uh, JIRA and uh, its integration with uh, uh, Jenkins via different kind of uh, JIRA plugins and so on. Uh, okay, thank you, Valentin. <laughs> now pipeline is uh, starting to work correct. As you can see, all uh, first stages are green now. And of course, here I, I want to update unit tests. And yes, as you can see, and build 236, I see that my unit tests are passed successfully. And of course, in testing, I could find it in test execution. So here we go. Yes, they run successfully just before. Uh, so, and uh, also uh, talking about JIRA. So here I could show, uh, sorry, forget one thing. And also our pipeline have a feature uh, when some tests failed, uh, our uh, JIRA plugin uh, creates new bug issue in JIRA. So here is an example how it looks like. So for testers, uh, it, it's uh, a great kind of uh, automation. So here you can find description of uh, which uh, what was was going wrong and uh, how to deal with it. So um, and uh, here, as you could see before, uh, our new feature development task DVS, uh, DVASS uh, two hundred nineteen one. So I refresh it. And here I could see that some comments uh, started in our issue. Jenkins pipeline is started. This build stage failed. And uh, sorry. Uh, you can see uh, the new issue. Ah, new, new okay. Issue. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yes, that's one. Yeah, actual one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so here is the actual one uh, issue for this uh, development task. So here, as you can see, uh, the status of this issue was changed to, to in progress. And here you can file, uh, for example, all test results. Uh, all comments. So here, like that, function test complete successfully, FIPTF complete successfully, and so on. And for example, unit tests also look like this. So, uh, course testers could find all the necessary information from there. Uh, so, and um, I want to share with you our thoughts about uh, migration of our. DevOps solution to another tool set uh, such as uh, Azure DevOps. So uh, we try to adapt our Jenkins pipeline code in a new rail. Some, uh, for example, for, uh, for Azure DevOps with uh, uh, its own uh, YAML syntax YAML, uh, for YAML pipelines. So the main reason was like uh, use only local tool set which provided by uh, Azure DevOps. So, uh, for example, it's like alternatives for Jira with, uh, uh, with Azure DevOps board, uh, boards. Uh, as alternative for Jenkins, uh, it's uh, like uh, Azure DevOps pipelines where you can see this code. So the code was uh, migrated without uh, uh, any hard refactoring or something like this. So it's uh, the main architecture and the main logic to, uh, will, so never changed. It work, it's working as before, like in, you can see in our Jenkins pipeline. And so also here you can see that uh, our demo pipeline <laughs> completed successfully. Uh, and for example, our Jira task, refresh and also here we find that the status uh, set it in done and uh, some more uh, reports are attached in our issue so and of course you can find that 
uh, accept PTF completely successfully, all comments. And here the last one that the policy stage completed successfully, pipeline finished successfully. Uh, so, and returning to our uh, Azure DevOps. So, and here, as you can see, uh, for example, our previous uh, our previous run of this pipeline. For example, it's working as before, with the same steps, with the same logic, with the same functionality, but in another way, in another environment with another tool set. So here it is, the same job, uh, job output block uh, before in Jenkins. So I think it's a great, uh, so I think it's great that our pipeline have uh, such ability like cross-platform, they think. And um, of course, uh, uh, and in conclusion, I would like to add that this example of DevOps workflow like uh, in Jira, oh, like, oh, sorry, like Jenkins or other DevOps uh, may not be perfect, but it will allow you some main framers uh, better or clearly understand how DevOps processes uh, might be look like, what tools exist currently and how the processes proceed. So we also continue working on its development to, and improvement, listen to all opinions, comments and remarks. So if you want to add something or share with us some thoughts, please be welcome. And uh, I think this example will serve as a good basis for further development and uh, improvements. So, uh, and I think that's all I wanted to share with you. Okay, I think, and I hope you find this demonstration useful and interesting. And I would like to give a word to Ilya to continue. Okay, uh, thanks, Valentin. So I start screen sharing again, and here we go. So uh, we hope that our repository, as you mentioned before, will be really useful to you, including our experience and our approaches, which we developed before, uh, and uh, which all was combined, tested, and placed in one place with uh, uh, useful comments and README, how to use it, how how run, how it looks like, how it should be. And so I think you can take our approach to building a DevOps as a basis, uh, use it to, in full, or just use like separate parts. For example, uh, maybe you use a different tool set or different orchestrator tool, for example, just not Jira, but uh, IBM Urban Code Deploy, or uh, as mentioned before, Azure DevOps. So you could uh, just grab them, just grab some uh, useful scripts like uh, for uh, files transferring from the Linux side to the mainframe or other stuff like uh, separate models and uh, use them and integrate in your current in your current processes in your current pipelines or whatever you want so uh, and also you could freely adapt them for yourself and use it and use them in your own way so or if you have your own vision of how everything should look like uh, you could safely change all the components uh, in your fork and propose your changes. So, as I mentioned before, you just uh, click here, like fork, and you made uh, a copy of all sources, uh, all files, which placed here uh, in your own local repository. And also you could uh, freely download it on your on desktop computer and uh, just like collect all files there and editing edit them on the, your desktop so therefore we will be glad to see you as a contributor as uh, i mentioned here on this uh, last slide 
Uh, so looking forward to see you as a contributor to our GRMD project. I'm sorry, slide. I'm not from beginning. Um, I'm going slide. They still, oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, so there we'll be glad to see you as a contributor and you can make any changes uh, or comments. So we will be glad to everyone. And uh, talking about, we do believe that we learn from people more than from books, from tons of great IBM documentation really. And uh, it's open, it's mainframe and, and uh, it's the GRMD project. So I think uh, that's all I, uh, we want to share with you on this session. And if you have any questions, please so ask them. So I think we're done. Okay. Thank you very much, Ilya and Valentin. Very interesting. Um, yeah, so if you have questions, please put them in the chat now. And um, also, please remember to give your feedback. So I think we all really appreciate feedback. So um, if you have any, please feel free to submit that. Okay, so far I don't see any questions in the chat. But if any questions come up, um, yeah, I'm sure you can also reach out to Ilya and Valentin after the session. Okay, then um, if there are no further questions, I will go ahead and close the session now. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for your attention. See you. Yeah, thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.